Hello, and welcome to another edition of Your Addiction, Your Bridge to Addiction Resources. My name is Yvonne Stroman. I'm the Community Program Specialist at the Council on Chemical Abuse. And this morning, we're going to be talking about underage drinking, and I've brought a special guest to help me have that discussion. So if you can introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role in the community. Good morning. My name is Kevin Rudy. I'm a police officer at the University of Pennsylvania, Penn State University. I'm assigned to the Berks campus. I've been in law enforcement for approximately 37 years. I spent 20 and a half years in the city of Reading and the last 16 plus I've been at the university. I have the pleasure of uh, working with not only the police department but with faculty, staff and of course the student body. And also, Kevin, you're also a board member for the Council on Chemical yes, Abuse. Yes, I am. I've bringing been. great expert expertise regarding uh, law enforcement and uh, also the opportunity to share with what's happening on our college campuses. And I know that you and I were talking a little bit earlier uh, just in terms of your role at Penn State um, and the length of time that you've been a law enforcement officer. Um, in your opinion, has there been a... Uh, um, an increase in terms of the amount of use uh, relative to alcohol among young people and has the attitude change uh, relative to its use? What, 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 what can you share with us about that? I think that's a, a two-part question. I think as far as underage drinking, I believe the community has become more educated in regard to that occurring. They're more cognizant, they're more vigilant. They're vigilant as far as uh, reporting or calling or attempting to intervene. I think underage drinking has increased, especially on college campuses. Um, it continues to be probably uh, the biggest issue that we encounter and confront because with underage drinking, not only do you have the, the uh, unfortunately the propensity for sexual assault and other related crimes, you also have issues that arise out of those offenses. You could have, with a sexual assault, you could have someone that's the victim of a crime. Mm -hmm. In regards to underage drinking, you could have someone operating under the influence of alcohol, thus involved in a serious motor vehicle accident, mm -hmm. which couldn't cause and does in fact cause life-altering events. So underage drinking has actually, I believe, the um, ramifications have not only increased but they have escalated. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, I know that you have been uh, familiar with, and I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, what happens for a young person that might be under the age of 21 and uh, on, is uh, caught with uh, using alcohol or in possession of alcohol. Um, what happens from a, um, a point of view from the school, but we'll, we'll also what might be available through that district magistrate? Right. Several years ago, COCA, in, uh, in uh, cooperation with the district attorney's office and the Berks County Courthouse, was able to introduce what's known as the underage drinking program. I would feel safe to say that 95% of the first offenders at Penn State Berks are afforded the opportunity to go into the underage drinking program. And what that allows them to do is to perform some community service and also to get some counseling and the fine is minimum, okay? And then once that is completed, their criminal record is expunged. Great. And by completing the program, that is no longer on their record. They still, in fact, do receive the license revocation if they have a Pennsylvania driver's license, and that's for 90 days. Mm -hmm. But they are basically given a second chance, and that is expunged and it is removed from their record. And that is an excellent program. And in this county right now, the district attorney has several uh, second chance programs, and yeah, they include yeah. criminal mischief, criminal trespass, disorderly conduct, harassment, public drunkenness, retail theft, and of course, underage drinking. And the fine for that program is approximately $100, which is certainly less than what a normal yeah citation cost would be for underage drinking. Mm -hmm. And um, so to your knowledge, the, the length of time that somebody would spend, they have to go to morning classes uh, in addition to that. Um, and I think it's very helpful for that college student because sometimes when you talk to young people, they want to major in something like criminal justice. Right. They want to major in something like teaching. And they don't have the understanding or knowledge to know that um, if you are cited for underage drinking, that could actually impact 
your major in school. Right, correct. Um, what I've been told is, you know, if you would have multiple offenses and, and it appears on your record and you and another candidate are both outstanding candidates, mm -hmm. of course that's going to create a red flag for the employer and they, in fact, under most circumstances, would look at the other candidate. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to instill in regards to underage drinking. A lot of people also neglect or forget to, you know, forget that if you are driving and you are under 21 years of age, if you have a BAC, a blood alcohol content, and it's 0.02 or above, that's DUI, driving under the influence, mm. whereas if you're 21, it's .08, and that's a substantial gap. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's huge. And, and so what is your role uh, in terms of communicating with parents regarding that? Because I suspect, you know, that mom or dad may get a little upset about that in terms of, you know, I'm putting all this money out into their education, and what are you telling me is that they could be getting into trouble and, and jeopardizing their career. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when we do encounter someone that's intoxicated, it depends on each individual situation. For example, if we would encounter someone at four o'clock in the morning and their BAC has reached a certain threshold, we are mandated to take them to the hospital for okay. treatment. Okay. Um, if they uh, do not have that high of a BAC, we will have someone sit with them or stay with them until it drops to an extremely low level. If we have to summon a, pa a family member to come to the university and pick them up, we do that frequently. We also are mandated by the courts to send a letter of notification to the parents. If someone is cited for underage drinking and we did not contact them the night of the offense, a letter is mailed to the parents informing he or she that their son or daughter was in fact cited for mm -hmm. underage drinking. Mm -hmm. So the, the, per, the parameters are in place for parental notification. Yeah, and, and I think that's very, very important. Um, and, and so the school's also supportive of trying to get that young person the help that they need if necessary. Um, and have you been, how have you been involved with that process? As far as the school, academically wise, they have what's known as student affairs. And mm -hmm. if someone gets cited for underage drinking, we also do what is known as a referral and that goes to the Office of Student Misconduct. Okay. And they in fact get involved and they require the students to also attend uh, classes that specifically deal with underage drinking ramifications. They have to meet with counselors and they have to look at the big picture. And the big picture is that alcohol can in fact cause life altering effects to them and it is a fact uh, an addiction. Yeah, and I think what, f for purposes of our conversation here, is very important that we note that um, our, the young mind is still developing. Right. And so there's research out there that says the brain is still developing from a cognitive point of view, even up until the age of 24 and 25. And so um, introducing alcohol into the system at such a, at, at an earlier age than that really, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. can disrupt their ability to learn. And so, um, you know, while we want to be legally responsible, we also want to be able to share with young people from a um, educational responsibility exactly. as well, that we want them to have the best chance to be as successful as they can be. And so uh, as part of your role as law enforcement and uh, you know, working in tandem with having young people get the help that they need is very, very pivotal. Um, and so can you talk a little bit about, you know, because I was sharing with you earlier, um, this is the end of the school year. Right. Um, uh, Penn State has already had its commencement and graduation. Uh, and now also there's the summer school, but there's also those families that are graduating from high school. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not uncommon in our community sometimes to hear mom and dad say, you know, we're going to uh, throw our son or daughter a party. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we're going to get the keg for him or her. We're just going to make sure that the kids are safe. We're going to ask everybody to drop their keys in the fish bowl and make sure that people stay over. But, you know, we need to be willing to educate and inform the parents that it's illegal to furnish alcohol to young people under the age of 21. Um, and I know that you've had a wealth of experience probably mm -hmm. uh, interfacing in those kind of situations. Can you talk to that a little bit? Unfortunately, what you brought up does occur, okay? Mm -hmm. And it also occurs at a college campus. And unfortunately, it is against the law to furnish any type of alcoholic beverages, et cetera, 
to someone that's under the under 21 years of age. Whether they're related to you or not. Exactly. Yeah. And unfortunately, with today's technology, it is not as difficult as you think to go back and get the trail of where the alcohol came from. At the university, and it happens occasionally, we will be able to track them back to local uh, stores, mm -hmm. vendors, uh, et cetera, where they actually purchase the uh, alcohol and then bring it to the university. Not only do they get charged um, with purchasing as far as, uh, excuse me, not only do they get uh, in trouble with the university as far mm -hmm. as being a student, they're 21 years or older, but they can get charged, and they do get charged criminally with furnishing to someone that's under 21, and that is actually a misdemeanor. And yeah. that offense requires them to be fingerprinted and photographed. And unfortunately, because of the ramifications, that has to be held to a different standard. And the district attorney looks at that in a different light. Mm -hmm. And of course, he does offer different programs, but there again, you have a misdemeanor offense. And to get that expunged, is a more difficult endeavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so the underage drinking program, um, it's, it's countywide, yes. right? And um, you're working very closely with the district magistrates throughout the county to, to afford this um, opportunity is really what it is. I think sometimes young people might see it as something that, you know, is being punitive, but it's really an opportunity for you to, number one, get the services and the help if you need it, if there's a problem that is developing. And then number two, the opportunity to um, get your record uh, kind of in, in such a way that you don't have to suffer those, those consequences. Yeah, thank you for that word. Expunged. Um, and so those are some win-wins actually on the, on the, and by the way, you're getting some education about uh, alcohol, the, the consequences that it has in the body for the young person, um, and you know, really reasons why, there's a reason why the state of yeah. Pennsylvania has the age of 21 and above for yeah. consuming alcohol. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think one thing that we do have to stress is with the presence of alcohol in a college environment and or a high school environment, the propensity for sexual assault increases tremendously right. yeah. because what you have is you have young men and women who are now under the in influence of alcohol and their mindset and their thought pattern changes drastically and they're into a situation where they're not cognizant of how they can get out of a, a particular incident and unfortunately lives are affected yeah. based on the consumption of alcohol if a sexual assault occurs mm -hmm. because the ramifications can be life altering. And it's altering. changed, yeah, exactly. absolutely, absolutely. Exactly. It's changed a lot because of technology, because mm -hmm. if something occurs at a party, they can take pictures, mm -hmm. put it on Snapchat, yik yak, and it's all over. It can be yeah. over the county, statewide, in seconds. So you have to be responsible for not only yourself, but for your actions and the way you basically carry yourself in the community. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this is really good information, Kevin, and I really thank you for uh, joining me this morning. So in the couple few minutes that we have left, is there anything that, you, that we perhaps did not touch upon that you really want to make sure uh, the viewers are able to, uh, to take with, away from this? I think the most important thing is in Pennsylvania, the law says that you have to be 21 years of age to purchase or consume alcohol. It doesn't say in the law that you have to exhibit rationalization or good common sense okay it's not written in the law it's not in any type of criminal code but that is an educational event if you're going to consume alcohol and you're over 21 do it responsibly please let someone else drive they now have this new cab service what's it called uber i believe uber. something like yes. that. uber mm -hmm. that's available i think yeah. that's a great tool you can call someone to pick you up it gets you from point a to point b it's not that expensive also, if, and another thing that is very cognizant is when you go out, either a male or a female, stay with your friends uh, the whole night Good advice, yes. and, and, and watch your environment and who you're with. But I think the most important thing for young men and women that are not 21 yet, I strongly encourage you not to partake until you are 21 because it can be a career affecting event and it's not worth having that on your record or something that you have to deal with. Plus it puts stress not only on you, but your parents, your family, your guardians, and other members 
other members of your family. Yeah, well that sounds like great sound advice uh, and I thank you Kevin for joining me. If you would like more information about our underage drinking program, you are welcome to contact us. Go on our website at www.cocaburks.org or contact us at 610-376-8669. We welcome you to join us again soon and thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. Check back every week for a new story with your bridge to addiction resources. You can call 610-376-8669 or visit online at cocaburks.org. C-O-C-A-B-E-R-K-S.org. Be sure to like and follow the Council on Chemical Abuse on Facebook and Twitter.